Hello and welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. My name is Sarah Ko and our guest today is Mr. Bill Brown. Now, Mr. Brown currently serves as Director of Indiana University's Office of Sustainability. He's also an adjunct faculty member of IU School of Public and Environmental Affairs, or SPIA. Now, with his active engagement and interest in local and national green initiatives, Mr. Brown was awarded twice the American Institute for Architects Presidential Citation, as well as a U.S. Green Building Council National Award for organizational excellence. Now, the United Nations revealed the post-2015 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, not too long ago with focus on positively transforming the world by 2030. While the 17 streamlined goals are meant to be global, IU is leading its own sustainability efforts ahead of its bicentennial anniversary in 2020. So in this session, Mr. Brown will share with us what his office and the school as a whole is doing to promote thriving culture of sustainability and what organizations and businesses could do to further bolster this movement. Bill, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, sir. I'm glad to be here. Well, sustainability is quite the buzzword um, lately and often debated topic, I believe. So what are your kind of insider opinion on the post-2015 Sustainable uh, Development Goals or SDGs that the UN recently came up with? Well, I think the 2030 goals are meant to be very ambitious and, you know, like ending poverty, ending hunger, um, uh, conquering climate change, uh, making cities sustainable. Um, those are all goals that are very ambitious and I think what the goals also try to point out is that these are achievable goals even though you know the timeline is fairly short we're talking 14 years from now so but we've we've made some remarkable progress for example um, uh, most of the nations of the world have agreed to limit their carbon emissions uh, in the recent Paris talk so um, there are some things that are happening that give me great hope and optimism for the future. That's great. Well, I just want to talk a little bit more about your office. So could you tell us a little bit about IU's Office of Sustainability and what kind of works and initiatives uh, and the mission and the goal really is for the office? And just kind of adding on to that, what do you, looking up for the bicentennial uh, event that's coming up for IU, what is the IU community really trying to achieve here? Well, we've been around for seven years, and we are the product of a recommendation of the Campus Sustainability Task Force that was mm -hmm. formed. And um, we've been trying to fulfill that roadmap uh, for the past seven years. And uh, our mission is uh, to catalyze a thriving culture of sustainability uh, in academic research, operations, administration, uh, campus life, and community outreach to enhance environmental health, economic prosperity, and social equity. So that's, that's a pretty tall order. Uh, we cover a lot of ground, but we involve lots of folks to uh, make those connections across campus. And we have uh, about 200 volunteers who work on seven working groups. Uh, those working groups are powered by faculty, staff, and students, and community members. And then we have um, uh, 16 to 18 interns at a time that also help uh, fuel those, those working group efforts. And uh, we have something now that we've started called the 2020 Transitions Lab that we'll talk more about. But um, these are all efforts to connect people across campus uh, to work on uh, solutions-based research and engage students and faculty and staff in those efforts. Well, that's definitely positive news that you have such a big crowd really supporting uh, the initiatives that the office is doing and that IU is doing. So you beat me to it, but tell us a little bit more about uh, the 2020 Transitions Lab. What exactly is this? Well, there's, there's a sort of a movement afoot across the country to uh, engage the, the campus itself as a classroom, as a lab for sustainability research, for solutions-oriented research. Uh, so that's something we have been doing for a long time, but we had not previously formalized that um, and called it a lab. Uh, that was our internship program that we've had over 270 interns have mm -hmm. taken on um, campus sustainability issues as part of their research and tried to tackle those issues. And so the 2020 Transitions Lab is an attempt to uh, formalize that effort to use the campus as a lab for sustainability research. And then I think the next step, uh, which we're also looking at, is how do you move that off campus uh, into the communities around the state of Indiana 
and then outside of, of Indiana and outside of, of our country? How do we make that an international lab? Mm -hmm. And so um, 2020 Transitions Lab is an extension of that. Uh, we've started a new uh, sustainability scholars program that involves undergraduates in that mm -hmm. type of educational effort. But it's all the same idea is um, using uh, real world, real world problems mm -hmm. as a focus of sustainability research. Yeah, absolutely, and I think those are some really great works that the lab in your office is trying to embrace. Um, and just switching gears a little bit, and I think you've started this discourse in a macro and a practical real world level. What do you think, or how and why do you think sustainability or sustainable development is so crucial or important for both the public sector and the businesses or private sectors? Well, when I, when I was a student here at IU, um, you know, the image that was stuck in everybody's mind was the first image of the Earth from outer space. And um, I think we all uh, learned at that point that we are on a spaceship. It is a, a finite planet. The systems that support everything we do are finite, and they can be degraded, and they are being degraded. And so um, there's a great deal of concern about these life support systems, the only life support system we have. How can we begin to regenerate those life support systems even as we put more pressure on those systems with the growing population? And um, what do we do about the issue of more and more people moving to the cities for the first time ever now more people live in cities than outside of cities. So um, though there are issues with sustainable cities and sustainable communities that are extremely important for all of us. Absolutely. And finally, wrapping things up, you've, throughout your professional career, you've worked with students, faculty members, government, and just the general public uh, for all these green initiatives and the movements that you've been a part of. So with that being said, what do you think the world could really, uh, what kind of concrete initiatives could the world really uh, put in place in order to ensure a healthy and a sustainable uh, planet and, and communities for future generations to come? Well, I think one of the grand challenges that we face right now is climate change. And, you know, the world has come together to make commitments to try to fix that. And, I think uh, one of the things that's missing is the, the market is missing some information. I think we need to put a price on carbon. Uh, we've tried to externalize those costs and, and that doesn't seem to be working for us. So mm -hmm. I think that's, that's something that we're going to have to do and to um, level the playing field for renewable energy. Um, and I think that can be done. I think there is a, a political will now to look at that. So uh, I have hope that that's something that will be accomplished. I also, as an architect, think that uh, what we're doing with our building design is going to be uh, incredibly effective, and it has been effective. Mm -hmm. IU campus, we have uh, 15 LEED certified buildings, and those buildings have helped our campus to reduce its energy use even while we've grown the amount of square footage and the number of students that we serve. So um, those sorts of things are very practical, and they're doable, and they have an economic payback, uh, but they also have health benefits. and and they have a lower impact on um, the systems that support us. Wonderful. Well, Bill, thank you so much for your, uh, for your insights and for coming in to speak with us today. My pleasure, Sarah. Thank you. Well, that's all for this edition of Cyber Focus. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any comments or suggestions for future topics, please let us know at cyber, that's C-I-B-E-R, at indiana.edu. Thank you.